Hello everybody. In today's video, we're going to get some stuff figured out. We're going to try and get uh, hinges set up and a few other things. We're going to talk about uh, some customizing that uh, is going to get done. So if you want to see that and more, make sure you stay tuned. Hello BSC family and welcome back to my bench. So today we're going to be working on the van but first off what I want to do is uh, let you know that if you want a shop card or a sticker you can go down in the description and email me with your address and I'll be happy to send one out to you. I also want to say thanks to all my subscribers. Without you guys this channel would not exist and if you're not a subscriber could you please hit that subscribe button it is free. And don't forget the bell and make sure that all notifications are turned on so you don't miss out on any videos. And while you're down there, you can also give me a follow on my Instagram and my Facebook group. Links for them are down in the description. And always remember, no matter who you're watching, the best way to help out a YouTuber, your favorite YouTubers, is to watch the entire video. So again, if you want a shop card or a sticker, just send me an email. So now let's get to it. Okay, first things first is um, I had to do some work here just to try and figure some stuff out before I can show you what needs to be done and how to do it, right? Now, I'm still working on trying to figure out how to put LEDs in this, basically where to run the wiring. Normally, um, most of the time when you're putting wiring in a vehicle, you can run the wires somewhere behind the door panels, you know, all the way across behind the car, wherever, you know, and uh, that would work. In this case, it's not going to for the simple fact that we're cutting out the doors. So I can't run wires all the way down to the front for the headlights and stuff like that. So I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, I think I've got a few things figured out, but we'll go from there. Uh, we'll get to that later. Um, also, I have to figure out my hinges now because this is a van and you don't have very much normally there's one hinge on the outside here let me zoom in for you normally there's one hinge on the outside and technically there's a second hinge on the inside and it's just the way GM did it so uh, I want to shave off this hinge and uh, we got to figure out what to do for hinges. Now, there are many types of hinges and you've probably seen many videos on how to build these, but if you want one, let me know. I will show you how I make them, if I can get a couple out here. So anyways, this is the typical way of people making hinges, right? You make them out of paper clips, so you can just straighten out a piece of wire and then bend it the way you need it. You know, you got two hinges, typically uh, one door, one facing like the direction this one is, and then one facing the opposite direction, right? And that'll go inside of a tube, and one on your door, and away you go. Now, depending on if you want an, uh, a door that opens to the outside of the fender, right? If you want a door that opens to the outside of the fender, you do it one way. And if you want a door that opens on the inside of the fender, like some of the, the old school cars do, uh, that'll determine which way you put this thing. Right, one way is this way, it opens like that, so it's on the outside of the fender, right? If my fingers are the fender and the door, it would be on the outside, right? Okay, but if you turn it around, now this side is stationary, now it would actually open inside. See how that works? So anyway, so I had to figure this out before I completely cut the doors out, right? Now I'm going to... Instead of using a two-piece hinge like this, you know, you'd have, you know, one up high and one down here kind of thing. I went with a one-piece hinge, which is basically the same thing, All right? Let me zoom in for you, okay? Basically the same thing, okay? Now, this is just one piece. It's a wire that goes through or goes over, through, and comes back out, so it's one piece right? But essentially still the same thing. 
right? This would slide down inside, you know, and away you go. So once I got that figured out, uh, that I'm going to do that, um, I started fitting my interior panel in. Try and get some decent light in here for you. So I started fitting the interior panel in where it's going to sit, right? And then I had to figure out, okay, there's my door line. I marked it with a pen, right? And then I take the hinge that corresponds with that side and I put it the right way. It would help right there like that. So now this will sit on the door over your loop is going to be halfway, you know, over top of the uh, door gap, right? Then I notched my interior panel so it would fit where everything would line up all my where I cut my door my interior lines will line up when I put everything together so now when my door opens this one here is actually going to open inwards um, just works out better that way for me uh, it makes it cleaner and everything else I'm trying to keep it in the frame here but yeah so that's the way that's going to sit now, of course, once you cut, you've got a gap here, right? And that's going to be there no matter what. But once you cut the door, we'll have to fill all that in. You know, make uh, the inside of the door where it would be flat. And then the same thing, we'll have to make the door jam and stuff like that, which is not a big deal. But to also figure out that, I had to glue my firewall on, right? So that I knew where that was going to sit and where what was going to clear and what's not going to clear. And at the same time... I had to kind of semi-mount my dash and there was a tab right here sticking out just a little bit on both sides. I had to cut that off and sand it down and uh, I do believe everything's going to fit. Um, I guess we'll deal with that once we get to the point of actually cutting open the doors and uh, fitting a few more things. Now as far as the back ones, the back ones will be probably a lot easier. Right. There is panels on the back ones, but I think uh, I think what I can actually do is put this in here and I may have to notch in here just a little bit, you know, so that when the door is closed, it's got room to actually swing open. Now, I may go the other way, you know, just to make less, but it's going to be a little harder with these loops sitting in there. Right. So we'll, we'll get to it as we go. Um, we'll see which way that turns out. But for now, I'm going to uh, start cutting out these doors. So the way I'm going to cut these doors out is I've got this tool. I picked it up, I believe, on Amazon. If I can find it again, I'll leave a link for you. But it's got all these different thicknesses of blades. Right? As you can see, there's all different thicknesses. It comes with the, the handle. Right? You just put one in, use the Allen wrench, tighten it down. Now you find the right one that's going to fit your gap. All right, very thin. And you're going to use the back side of the angle. And you're just going to slowly and carefully, especially with your first couple passes, you're just going to follow your gap line. Go slow so you don't jump out of it. In your first couple, you're just putting very light pressure just to create the groove for the tool to follow. Okay. And you're just going to keep doing that until you get all the way through. And you can continue with light pressure, but as you go and as you get deeper, you can... Put a little more pressure. You still don't want to put too much because if you jump out, you're going to make one hell of a gouge in the body, and then you got to go back and fix that. Try to go slow. Try to be stable. Okay, you're going to do that all the way around in your fender wells along the bottom, right? And then across the top. Now across the top is going to be a little tricky. It's going to be fairly thin, and the windshield post is going to be kind of thin. All right, so uh, because I'm doing so much modifying to this, 
Uh, I'm going to take this off right away so I can cut through in that spot. So I'm going to take that hinge off and uh, use my uh, X-Acto blade and just make a bit of a line there where I can kind of scribe, start the scribe, right? And then gently cut that through. Now you can do that with uh, hoods, trunk lids, anything like that. Okay. So something else that we're going to be working on. I don't know if I'll do it in this video, but I've been looking at uh, different taillights and stuff. I believe these are uh, 69 Cougar taillights. I was kind of thinking, well, that would look pretty freaking cool in there as a up and down taillight. Now I've got something else. I'm not sure where these are from. Uh, they got a bit of an angle to them, as you can see. I could cut the angle piece off and French them in, or I could leave the angle on there. Yeah, and uh, we'll round the tail light piece off here. We'll fill this in, French that right in there. Um, still deciding with that. Uh, as far as the roof, uh, the roof I fitted a bit. I don't know where it is right now. There it is. Yeah, it's got a couple of locating pins, you know, uh, and that'll fit on there like so. And this is where I'm thinking maybe some of the wiring. Now, this is probably going to be difficult to see. But you can kind of see it up front there. Let me get a pointer. You can see it right up front here. There's actually a gap right there. All right, and it's like that all the way around. So, what I'm thinking is in the bed area, like I mentioned, I may do the wiring, the battery, and the switch. And I could run up behind... Uh, up the wall here, right there, and in behind this, coming up from the bed. So it'll come up the bed, up through here, drill a bit of a wall, right? Or drill a bit of a hole, I should say. And then run across. Now my thing is, is how do I get the wires from up here down to here? Now I've got some wire, uh, some really, really, really thin wire that I could actually put in behind the glass because the glass wraps around from the vent window all the way around so it would actually be in behind the glass and once that's painted to interior color you'd never see the wire and then i could run it down here and i'd have lots of space inside my fender wells and stuff like that where i could do all my wiring connections right uh, to close this off uh, i would use sheet styrene um, I'm not sure what thickness this is, but I could use sheet styrene. I'll measure this up for you, but I could put that in here with the roof taped on and put it right up to the roof and glue it on to this edge and then just trim it off after, right? So we could do that. And then once we take the roof back off, because I'm leaving it removable, we'll have this little piece of plastic sticking up. All right. Let's see if I can show you here. We'll have a little piece of plastic sticking up where it would meet the roof, right? And I could actually just kind of cap that off a little bit on a bit of an angle, you know, so you'd never see that once you pull the roof, pull the roof off to look inside. So I'm going to uh, cut this here, and uh, I'll leave the last little bit of it to show you exactly what's going on. But uh, yeah, I'm already sitting at 13 minutes. I'm going to try and keep these videos shorter. Uh, just so you're not getting too bored, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to scribe all these out and get the doors open and uh, I'm going to work at figuring out how to do the hinge for this side door. Cause remember we want this to go up and right now it's a very, very tight and thin up here. I also have to get rid of this sliding track on the side for the door that would normally slide open. Right? So I want to get rid of that. So it looks the same all the way around. And then we'll figure out this hinge. So um, I'll be back at that and uh, maybe do a little bit of a time lapse. But uh, I want to try and keep these videos under 20 minutes if possible. Um, if you don't mind a little longer, uh, at the end of this video, let me know in the comments below. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to get to this and I'll be back when I've got more figured out, I guess. See you in a few.
Okay, everybody. So, you saw me uh, uh, cut out the doors and a uh, bit of a time lapse. Kind of told you what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. And, uh, yeah, so that's what we're left with. Now, yeah, obviously, on something like this and the side posts here, you got to be really careful uh, that you don't break them. They are quite flimsy now. Uh, you also saw me cut up the inner panels right for the doors now they are not perfect as you can see this one's a little longer so i'm gonna have to trim these back just a little bit so that i can fill in the door jams right and that's what uh that'll be in the next video uh, as you can see the big gap here and that's where the hinges will go like i said not that one because that's a different one. I need this one. So this will sit in there like so. All right. As you can see, door hinges will sit in there like that. And we're good to go. So yeah, we'll fill in both sides, things like that. Uh, the next thing I may have to do is actually trim these back just a little bit to give myself some room for, uh, for some filler in that. And uh, I'm going to do some cleanup and stuff. So you saw that I've used these little razor saws, right? And uh, they come in a little kit. It comes with a handle. I find the handle heavy and bulky. I uh, don't normally need it, but it comes with it. And if I can find the link, I'll find it and post it in the description down below if you want to check it out and pick it up. No affiliation, so I don't get any cut of it, but that's okay. Um... So yeah, they, they were cheap. They, they work great. They are sharp. They work great. So yeah, uh, in the next video, we're going to start looking at putting some of this together, uh, possibly. I'm going to start looking at uh, lighting and stuff like that and starting to do some more of the customization on, you know, the taillights and things like that. Uh, maybe do some filler filler on some of these corners where the it's really heavy um, mold lines. So other than that, uh, off camera, I mean, you guys know how to do this. Uh, I cleaned up the edges, and I'm going to do some more cleaning up on it, you know, from, from scraping and stuff, right? Uh, you get a little bit of an edge and stuff at the back, you know, from the saw and different things like that. So, you know, I'm going to continue cleaning this up. Uh, what I did find, though, with this and... Uh, I don't know if it's everything or what, you know, but I find that this plastic, uh, it was almost like, uh, almost like a filament 3D printer when the filament isn't hot enough and it doesn't stick together properly. Uh, it's almost like this plastic is like that, like it was injected, but it wasn't quite molten plastic. And I find things are actually flaking when you're trying to cut. Uh, I've got a piece up here that I'll have to fill because it flaked off. Um, I don't think there's any on the doors. You know, it's just when, you, when you're when you scraping or something like that, it seems to, to want to flake like if it's squished together and it's not fully bonded. Like I said, like a 3D printer, right? So anyways, uh, if you've got this and you're trying to do that, just be aware of that. And uh, yeah, it should be good. Uh, it probably helps if you have a really sharp blade. This one's due for uh, a changing. I can see flat, shiny edges here, which means there's a lot of nicks and it's dull, points missing. So that's going to get changed for the next video. So yeah, uh, if you're liking this and how things are going, I'm also using a new program for editing. So let me know how my videos are turning out. I'm still working with it, still learning it, but... Uh, it was time to upgrade from uh, Windows Movie Maker, which is what I've been using all the way up to the last video. Uh, yeah, the last video I started using this new program. So, uh, yeah, let me know how that looks. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions or something you want to see more in depth of, please let me know down in the comments. I, I read every one of them. I may not answer every one of them, but... Um, yeah, I'll read every one of them and see what I can do. And again, thank you to all my subscribers. My channel wouldn't be here or worth anything 
if it wasn't for you. Now, if you're not a subscriber and you're watching this, hey, uh, if you like what's going on, please hit that subscribe button for me. Uh, and to everybody, make sure that bell notification is turned on and make sure it's turned on to all notifications so you don't miss out on any of these videos. Also, don't forget, follow me on my Instagram and my Facebook group. Links for them are down in the description. And if you want to help out the channel in any way, I do have a PayPal me link down there as well. So with all of that, uh, we're going to see you in the next video. No matter what you're doing, sometimes you just got to get out of the comfort zone. But make sure you do it for you. Or in this case, my wife. But either way, always love what you're doing. Don't be afraid to try. Until next time, later. <laughs>